Hey guys, this is Tom Leo signing in, and welcome to a very unique video here on the Tom Leo YouTube channel. So one of my favorite channels that I like to watch on occasion is a channel by the name of TGS Anime, uh, which is hosted by a guy named Sam. On this channel, he does a lot of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh related content, and as a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, I really like a lot of the content that he makes on there. And one of my favorite series of videos that he made uh, on this particular channel is statistically the best Yu-Gi-Oh blank where he goes over every single prominent character in the Yu-Gi-Oh series and like takes a look at all of their wins their losses how many duels they partaked and determined statistically who was the best Yu-Gi-Oh player in the entire Yu-Gi-Oh anime I really like this kind of video because it takes opinions and biasisms out of the equation and focuses on facts and numbers and math. Not that there's anything wrong with having opinions and biasisms and such. It's just when it comes to answering these sorts of questions, I prefer the facts. And for those of you that have been watching my streams for a while, you know I've been on some sort of a, a Pokemon high recently. And from these two thoughts that have just been floating around in my head, merge together to create one interesting idea. An idea that, to my knowledge, has never actually been done on YouTube before. Ash Ketchum, our favorite ageless 10-year-old protagonist. He's had a lot of Pokemon throughout his 20-year-long journey. The question that I am posing for this series of videos is statistically, out of all of those Pokemon, which of them is the best Pokemon that Ash has ever had. So I need to lay down a couple of ground rules just so we all have an understanding as to how I'm gonna be uh, judging every single one of Ash's Pokemon. Or you know, you could just put it in the description below so we don't have to waste any more time than we already have. Okay, sound good, great, let's move on. So for this video, I'm gonna focus specifically on the Pokemon Ash caught throughout his Kanto journeys. So essentially all the Pokemon he caught from the very beginning up to the end of the Orange Island series. The way I'm going to determine the statistics of every Pokemon is going, there's going to be a few categories. I'm going to be determining how many Pokemon they battled against, how many times they won, how many times they lost, how many assists did they get, and how many draws did they get as well. I'm also going to be determining their win percentage, and I'm going to be calculating a little something that I like to call the battle score. I'll get to that in a bit later. Also, I'm going to be taking Ash's Pikachu out of the equation because he's still battling right now, and trying to determine his statistics would, would take quite a while to do. Also, considering the numerous times Pikachu has won throughout its uh, journey, it's probably safe to assume that Pikachu is statistically the best Pokemon that Ash ever had. So I'm gonna take him out of the equation and give some of the other Pokemon a chance. With that said, we have 11 different Pokemon throughout Ash's original series journey to go through. And there's quite a few interesting things about the stats of these Pokemon. Before I continue, I'd like to give a big thank you to Reddit user Zizin96, who went through the entire Pokemon anime and created a detailed list of every single one of Ash's Pokemon, and essentially making it very, very easy to, um, to go through all the information and write the statistics down so that I don't have to watch the entire anime to do that myself. Um, thank you very much. And I'm gonna leave a link to both the post and his Google Docs sheet so you guys can see uh, the source that I'm working with here. But without further ado, let's start with the very first Pokemon that Ash caught, and that was his Butterfree. <laughs> Ash's Butterfree had fought a total of five battles. Out of those five battles, he had two wins, two losses, zero assists, and one draw, giving him a win percentage of 40%. Not much to say about this particular Pokemon. This Pokemon, like most of the other easy to catch bug type Pokemon, they evolve so fast, but they also wind up being not the best Pokemon in the world and uh, Ash's Butterfree was no exception. I wouldn't be surprised if the writers realized this as well and decided to let Butterfree go because of this as well. 
Now, some of you guys might be wondering what were Butterfree's wins and losses. Well, as a Metapod, it won against Sammer's Pinsir in episode four, and also tied against Sammer's uh, Metapod in that same episode. In episode 15, uh, as a Butterfree, it won against this gentleman's Raticade on aboard the SS San. Now, I know some people might be saying, oh, but that wasn't really a win though, because the guy said, let's just call it a draw. Yeah, right, that was a draw. Let's be real. He just didn't want people to see him lose. So he's like, oh yeah, let's just call it a draw. Yeah, no, sorry, buddy. That's a win for Butterfree. As for its losses, it lost as a Butterfree two times against uh, Misty's Staryu in episode seven and AJ Sandshrew in episode eight. But yeah, this Pokemon did not do a whole lot of battling. So it's no surprise that uh, this Pokemon got this low of a win percentage. Now let's check out Ash's next Pokemon that he caught, and that was his Pidgeot. All right, Pidgeot, first attack now! <laughs> Pidgeot fought a total of seven battles. Out of those seven battles, he had three wins, four losses, one assist, and one nope. draw, giving it a 42.86% win, win ratio. After looking at this list, I find it interesting that the Pokemon that uh, Ash releases are the ones that have battled the least. Not all of them, there are a few exceptions to this, but uh, Butterfree and Pidgeot in particular, especially with low win percentages like this, it seems to me like Ash uh, let both these Pokemon go for other reasons as opposed to just like letting them go be their own Pokemon and such. But that's not to say Pidgeot didn't have uh, some good victories. Its two major victories were as a Pidgeotto uh, against Misty's Starmie and uh, Jesse's Rhydon. If you're confused as to why Jesse had a Rhydon, it's because Team Rocket took over the Viridian City Gym when uh, Giovanni had to take care of other business. And uh, like I said before, any battle against Team Rocket that is more formal instead of forceful, uh, those were count. Those will be counted. However, it did have more losses than wins. Uh, its biggest ones being Sammer's Pinsir in episode four, Brock's Geo Dude in episode five, AJ Sandshrew in episode eight, and Koga's Venomoth in episode thirty-one. We're already two Pokemon in, and uh, these these stats are not good in the slightest. Don't worry, there are better Pokemon that we're gonna analyze later on. Starting with good old Bulbasaur. Fire the solar beam! <laughs> Bulbasaur fought a total of 27 different Pokemon. Out of those 27 Pokemon, he had 16 wins, 9 losses, 3 assists, and 2 draws, giving it a win percentage of 59.26%. All right, now we're getting into some of the good Pokemon. What sticks out to me the most about Bulbasaur is that it is the only Pokemon throughout Ash's Kanto Pokemon that has the most assists. I think that's pretty poetic for what the Bulbasaur lineup is capable of. I'm not a Pokemon expert, so someone can probably correct me in the comments down below but I've always thought Bulbasaur to be more of a support Pokemon than an actual powerhouse type Pokemon. So Bulbasaur is definitely an upgrade from the last two Pokemon, but there's still plenty of more Pokemon to go through, including the big guns himself, Charizard. It's Charizard! <laughs> Charizard fought against 26 different Pokemon. Out of those 26 different Pokemon, he won 19 times, lost seven times, had one assist and zero draws, giving him a win percentage of 73%. Hell yeah, Charizard reaches these high percentages. Charizard may have fought one less Pokemon than Bulbasaur, but having three wins more than Bulbasaur and two less losses, it's pretty respectable. Now, some of these wins include when it was a Charmander. In episode 25, it won against Erica's Weeping Bell. In episode 31, it went against Koga's Golbat. As a Charizard, it only, it only continued to rack up the wins. 
including Blaine's Magmar in episode 59, Richie's Charmander in episode 79, Lunana's Alakazam and Marowak during the double battle in, 100, in episode 108, Drake's Electabuzz in 112, Falconer's Pidgeot in episode 131, Claire's Dragonite in episode 254, Gary's Scizor, Golem, and Blastoise in episode 270, and most impressively, in episode 138 of the Advanced Series, Nolan's Articuno. You don't see many of Ash's Pokemon taking down legendaries, but Charizard... Charizard definitely puts in the work. But that's not to say Charizard didn't have its fair share of losses. In fact, as a Charmander, it lost against Erica's Gloom in episode 25, and as a Charizard, it lost against Blaine's Rhydon in episode 58, Richie's Pikachu in episode 79, Drake's Dragonite in episode 112, Harrison's Blaziken in 272, and Brandon's Dusclops in episode 189 in the Advanced series. But still, with a win percentage like that, Charizard is looking poised to take first place overall. But let's see how the others do. Continuing with Squirtle. <laughs> Welcome to the team, Squirtle! Squirtle. Squirtle battled a total of 13 different Pokemon. Out of those 13 Pokemon, he had 7 wins, 6 losses, 1 assist, and 0 draws, giving him a win percentage of 83.85. So out of the 3 starter Pokemon that Ash has ever owned, Squirtle according to the win percentage is the worst. I think that has more to do with the fact that Squirtle kept popping in and out in between joining the Squirtle squad, but yeah, it just didn't do as many battles as I uh, thought it did. But still, it had some impressive victories, including Drake's Onyx in 111, and of course there's Brandon's Ninjask in episode 190 of the Advanced series. As for its losses, it lost against Blaine's Ninetales in episode 58. Jesse's Machamp in episode 63, Richie's Butterfree in episode 79, Drake's Dragonite in episode 112, and Brandon's Soul Rock in episode 190 of the Advanced series. So Squirtle compared to some of Ash's other Pokemon is still, is still pretty average, but still. The numbers don't lie, man. If Squirtle wanted to be the best, he should have gone with a few more battles. Now let's move on to what I consider to be Ash's wild card in his uh, Kanto Pokemon, and that is Kingler. Now Kingler, grab hammer attack! The seventh Pokemon that Ash ever owned had a total of seven battles. And out of those seven battles, it had five wins, two losses, zero assists, and zero draws giving it a win percentage of 71.43. Yeah, Kingler, in terms of win percentage, is pretty on par with Charizard. Now, I'm pretty sure we all know the wins that uh, Kingler has brought to the table in this series, but let's run through them anyway. We had Mandy's Executor, Seedra, and Golbat absolutely dominated in episode 73, which to my knowledge, gave Ash his first and only sweep that he's ever had in his Pokemon journey. And then the other two victories are from Pete's Cloister in episode 76 and Misty's Poliwhirl in episode 217. It's only two losses were Pete's Arcanine in episode 76 and Misty's Psyduck in 217. But still, there's a reason why this particular Pokemon is the wild card. Like, nobody, and I mean nobody, could have ever thought that Kingler, especially when it was a Krabby, would be so powerful and could ever, like, take down these sorts of Pokemon that it fought against. But it did, and the, and the stats don't lie. Now comes an interesting Pokemon that kind of throws the whole win percentage thing for a loop, and it's Ash's Primeape. Mega kick right now! Primeape. Ash's Primeape battled 
three different Pokemon, all of which were in the same episode, and he won all three of those fights. So having zero losses, zero assists, and zero draws, this gave Primeape a 100% win ratio. I'm sorry, what? So when I was calculating all of Ash's Kanto Pokemon, this is when I realized that the win percentage wasn't going to be the most reliable way to determine which of Ash's Pokemon were going to be statistically the best. Simply put, Primeape didn't do that much battling. Yes, it won all of those battles, and its 100% win ratio is nothing to scoff at, but I just, I personally do not feel comfortable saying that Primeape is better than Ash's Charizard, who has done way more battling and has put in way more wins than Primeape ever had. I eventually did find a way, and let me tell you, it's gonna put everything into perspective, but again, I'm gonna get to that later. Oh, and uh, Primeape's victories involve an unnamed trainer's Machop, Machamp, and Giant's Hitmonlee in episode 29, so... There you go, there, there, there's his wins. Next up is Ash's Muck. Honestly, Muck is not a Pokemon that I ever thought Ash would ever get. I don't know, it just, just for some reason, it just didn't seem like a Pokemon Ash would ever own, but he did. And let's see how, how he did in terms of his stats. Surprisingly, Muck battled a total of two different Pokemon. It had one win, one loss, Zero assists and zero draws, giving it a 50% win ratio. I honestly thought Muck did a lot more battling, especially outside of the main series. But according to this information, it only its only win was against Jeanette's Bellsprout in episode 77, and its major loss was against Gary Scizor in episode 270. For some reason, I thought for sure uh, Ash's Muck did way more battling, but uh, I guess that's not the case. And while Muck didn't get a terrible win percentage, it's a far cry from the 73% win ratio that Charizard had. But again, ultimately, win percentage isn't the only deciding factor when it comes to which of Ash's Pokemon is statistically the best. Let's continue down the list. We got three more Pokemon left. Next up is. Ashes Tauroses. All 30 of them. Now, Tauros, use horn attack! Look at that incredible power! For those of you that don't know where Ash caught all of his Tauroses, there's actually a band episode of Pokemon where Ash and his friends took part in a in the Safari Zone. And the reason why that episode was banned? Guns. Yeah, they actually had guns in the Pokemon anime, or at least just in that one episode. Also, just to be clear, I'm counting all the different Tauroses as one Tauros, because trying to determine the singular stats for each of those Tauroses would be a pain. Not that it would have made that big of a difference, because according to these stats, it only battled six times, only having two wins, three losses, one assist, and one draw, giving it a win percentage of 33.33. So this Pokemon, just like Pidgeot, has one more loss than it does wins, and it didn't really do that much battling. Its notable wins were against uh, Drake's Venusaur in episode 112, and Fernando's Taurus in 146, and it even drew against Annabelle's Metagross in episode 170 in the Advanced series. Still, it did lose against Drake's Dragonite in, uh, in episode 112, Gary's Nidoqueen in 269, <laughs> nice, and Annabelle's Alakazam in episode 169 of the Advanced series, also nice. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely see this Pokemon more on the low end of Ash's best Kanto Pokemon. However, to my surprise that there is another Pokemon that Ash caught in the Kanto series that has an even worse percentage than all of the other ones that we've seen so far. And that's Lapras. Lapras, water gun attack! Lapras hits its mark! 
Ash's Lapras only battled one time. It had no wins, but it also didn't lose either. It had zero assists, and in its one battle, it drew. This gives Lapras a 0% win ratio. Considering how many times Ash had used Lapras throughout the Orange Island series, you'd think it would have done a, a lot more battling than that. Oh wait, no, it actually didn't do that much battling. Ash mainly used Lapras in order to get around the Orange Islands. It was more of a surf slave than an actual battling Pokemon. Huh, I guess these stats are pretty accurate. And again, this is another one of Ash's Pokemon that he wound up releasing. Personally, I don't see why the writers let go of Lapras. Like, Butterfree, I can understand. Pidgeot, maybe. But Lapras? It's a water and ice type, for Christ's sakes. Why on earth would, would you want to get rid of something like this? Sure, it didn't battle a whole lot, but it's still quite a powerful Pokemon if you train it enough. Even when it wasn't trained, it still, it still drew against Drake's Gengar in episode 112. So the potential for Lapras to be, to be one of Ash's strongest Pokemon is definitely there. But nope. No battles, other than the one, and immediately lets it go in the next episode. So, yeah, that is just, that is just a disservice to Lapras, in my opinion. We have reached the final Pokemon of Ash's Kanto team. You know him as the big, lovable snoozer, Snorlax. <laughs> Snorlax had a total of 14 battles. Out of those 14 battles, it had 11 wins, 3 losses, 1 assist, and 0 draws, giving it a win percentage of 78 Point fifty seven. Hell yeah, that is, those are some very impressive stats right there, Snorlax. So honestly, if we don't count uh, Primeape, who has a 100% win ratio, Snorlax is statistically the best of Ash's Kanto Pokemon in terms of win percentage, because that is the highest win percentage out of all of Ash's Kanto Pokemon. And just looking at the Pokemon that it it fought throughout its time, it's it's quite impressive, honestly. It it beat Raiden's for Alligator in episode 194, which was a Pokemon Sumo episode. It defeated Claire's Dragonite in episode 254. It also defeated Gary's Arcanine and Nido Queen in episode 270. It even beat it Harrison's Hypno and Steelix in episode 271 and even beating Greta's Hariyama and Macham in episode 149 of the Advanced series. This Pokemon puts in the work. All right, so we've gone through all of Ash's Kanto Pokemon. Now let's go over all of the win percentages and who had the most. In first place is Primeape with a win percentage of 100. I still hate that. Second place is Snorlax with a win percentage of 78.57. In third is Charizard with a win percentage of 73. Kingler comes in fourth with a win percentage of 71.43. Bulbasaur takes spot number five with a win percentage of 59.26. Squirtle takes number six with a win percentage of 53.85. Muck coming in seventh place with a split 50% win ratio. And then all the rest at the bottom, Pidgeot in eighth place with a win percentage of 42.86. Butterfree with a 40% win ratio. Tauros with a 33.33%. And Lapras in dead last with a 0% win ratio. So yeah, like I said before, I am not comfortable saying that Primeape is statistically the best of Ash's Kanto Pokemon. Because again, it only battled three times, and it was a and it was against a bunch of unknown characters Pokemon. So I wanted to find a new way to determine statistically which of Ash's Pokemon is the best Pokemon. And I did find a way. 
So you know all those wins, losses, assists, and draws that I, ke I kept mentioning throughout each of these Pokemon? I decided to give each Pokemon a point value based on these particular stats. A win would be worth 1 point, a loss would be worth minus a point, and assists and draws would be worth half a point. And then what I would do is I would tally them all up, and uh, each Pokemon would get what I call a battle score. The idea behind this system is to reward Pokemon that have won far more battles and punish Pokemon who didn't win that much, and especially to keep Pokemon that might have had a 100% win ratio but didn't do that many battles. <coughs> Primate. <coughs> so, if we were to determine statistically the best of Ash's Pokemon, this would be the best way to do that. And you know what? That's exactly what happened. We'll start from the bottom of the bottom and work our way up. Coming in at dead last with a battle score of negative 0.5 is Pidgeot. Second to last is a tie between Muck and Tauros with a battle score of 0. Third last is another tie between Butterfree and Lapras with a battle score of 0.5. And with those five out of the way, we move on to our top six statistically best Pokemon in Ash's Kanto team. In sixth place is Squirtle with a battle score of 1.5. In fifth place is yet another tie, this time between Kingler and Primeape with a battle score of three. In third place, with a battle score of 8.5 is Snorlax. In second place, with a battle score of 9.5 is Bulbasaur. And the number one statistically best Pokemon on Ash's Kanto team is Charizard with a battle score of 12.5. Hell to the yeah, Charizard reigns supreme. Woo! I imagine these results are gonna piss off a lot of people, and again, don't look at me man, these are just stats. Um, I do admit though, there might be a few assist points that might not have been considered in each of these Pokemon because I took Pikachu's battles out of the equation, but honestly I don't think they would have changed the score that much. If you want to use the win percentages as the definitive factor of which of Ash's Pokemon is statistically the best, then you can use that. But honestly, I feel like the battle score is far more accurate because it takes it takes everything that a Pokemon does throughout its entire career and puts it together in an easy, readable diagram of their value. And of course, it's nice to see Charizard at the top. I suppose Primeape did do well getting into the top 5 of Ash's best Kanto Pokemon, but considering that some of the other Pokemon that Ash had were weaker than it, it's not really all that impressive. Plus there's a 9 point difference between the top slot and his position, so again, not really all that impressive, and I imagine as we analyze Ash's other Pokemon, that gap is only going to get wider and wider. Thank you all so much for watching my analysis video. I'm not really sure what I'm going to call this video. Now this video was was essentially just for fun and uh, one that again I don't think anyone has ever really done on YouTube so I thought I'd give it a shot and see what everyone thinks of, uh, of these results. Again if you prefer the win percentage you can go by that but honestly the battle score I think is probably the most accurate way to determine statistically the best of Ash's Pokemon. So yeah, next time I'm gonna go over all of Ash's Johto Pokemon and we'll see statistically how well those Pokemon do. But until next time, thank you all so much for watching this analysis vid. Let me know in the comments below what other things you would like me to analyze. But until then, I am Tom Leo, you've been amazingly fantabulous people, and I'm signing off. Thank you guys for watching, I'll catch you in the next stream. Peace!